Good morning. It is lovely to welcome people both online and in the church building. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Graham. I'm the assistant minister here. Me and Janet will be um, leading the service this morning. Sarah is on a uh, well-earned and frankly overdue uh, break, I'm glad to say. Um, there are toilets at the back of church through the uh, doors if you need them. Um, as you know, we're asking people to wear a mask unless you're exempt, particularly when you are moving around and also when you're singing, please. Uh, after the service, um, it's better to talk outside uh, rather than inside um, and just to be kind of aware of uh, other people's uh, cautions and needs. Uh, obviously, some of us will feel that this is overcautious, some of, it, some of us will feel this is barely uh, enough and some of us uh, won't be um, back in the building for a bit because uh, it's not right for them. So uh, we just need to be aware that there's all sorts of different thoughts and feelings as we, as we gather wherever we are gathering. Uh, one other notice is that Fiona and Jane will be taking the, the children and the youth onto the school field for some games if you'd like to go and we'll be going out at the end of the couple of worship songs that we'll be having. Uh, parents, at the end of the service, please go to the school field and to collect your children and if you are taking a child uh, of five and under, they must be accompanied by an adult, please. Um, like I said, we are, we are online as well, which means that we are uh, live streaming. If that is a particular problem uh, for you, then that side of the church building is the one to, to, to be on. That kind of does not mean if, you've, uh, if you're worried about your hairstyle or anything, just uh, if, if that's a particular problem, then that side of the building, you won't be uh, on, uh, um, on social media or anything. I appreciate that's uh, something that we need to be aware of. I really do hope that is all the notices that I need to um, say at the moment. So we will start, and I'm going to need the words on the screen, I'm afraid. So please join in uh, online and in person with the words in yellow. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize in a moment of quiet his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. But we recognize that we have not always worshipped God in our lives. We recognize that we've fallen short of God's love and God's call on our lives. So we turn to him and we say sorry. We have not always worshipped God, our creator. Lord, have mercy. Next one, please. Thanks. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. So may the love, may the God of love, bring us back to Himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Next one. So as God's people, we have gathered. And we're going to worship him together in song. Uh, you're very warmly welcome, whether you're online or in person, to uh, stand up to worship. Uh, if you're going to uh, sing, then do please uh, put your masks on if you're in the church building. At the end of these um, uh, couple of songs, the, the children and youth will be going out, so you'll need to gather at the back. Thank you. Well, yes, if you'd like to stand, we're, we're going to sing a couple of songs now. Um, it's fantastic to be able to sing with people in, in the flesh, not uh, in a little box <laughs> in the distance. So uh, let's really sing out. And maybe it's an opportunity to have a fresh start. Maybe if you know the song well, maybe you want to close your eyes to help you focus. Or maybe you want to kneel. Maybe you want to raise your hand. See it as an opportunity to, to do something different today. Oh 
Thank you, living Lord, for your deep love for us. Thank you for bringing us to your glory so that we may boast in you alone. Amen. Do please have a seat unless you are children and youth and wanting to go out to the field, in which case do make your way to the back. And whilst you're doing that, we will pray for you. Loving God, thank you for our children and young people and their leaders. We pray that 
um, you will bless them, that they will know uh, you in their joy and in the fun that they are having. Be with them, um, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now Adele is going to bring us our Bible reading, and then Janet will bring us our talk. The reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Let's just pray. Father, we just pray that you'd help us to have ears and hearts to take in your word this morning. We ask you to feed us and challenge us and equip us for service. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I was preaching at the nine o'clock service today, and this passage from Ephesians is actually one of the set readings for today, and it happens to be one of my very favourite Bible passages. Um, the sermon's going to be short, or shorter, um, there's an awful lot in the passage, so I hope that maybe when you go home you'll read the passage again and think a little bit more deeply about it. I actually preached on this passage at Christchurch well over 20 years ago, at the time when Chris Matthews was organising his first Three Peaks marathon and people were in training for that walk getting their bodies fit and ready for a marathon walk and Ephesians is in fact one of my very favorite books in the Bible I had the privilege of uh, going to Ephesus with Audrey Smith I think probably about 25 years ago um, it's a place that sticks in my mind the Roman amphitheater is still there the pre place where Paul preached and St. Paul spent two years in Ephesus, which I think is the longest he spent anywhere. Um, 
St. Ephesus is also uh, famous because St. John died there, and it's possible that the Virgin Mary also died there because she went to live with John. So it's quite a, a key place in the early church. This passage that we've got today is um, one of the passages that uh, likens the church to a body. And it's a picture that's been really important to me throughout my whole ministry. Christ himself is the head of the body and under him all the other bits of the body fit together. So just for a minute, think about your body. All the different bits of your body bits you can feel right now every single bit of our bodies is important if one bit's um, missing or not working properly then we are disabled and we also know that if one little bit even if it's your little toe hurts you can feel it through your whole body somebody's got something hurting blisters from putting tents down <laughs> no um, but every, every bit of our, our bodies is important. And Paul says the church is like a body, which means that each of us is part of that body. And we all have a job to do. Um, we're often tempted to say that we don't have much to offer or we can't do much. But every single little part of the body has a job to do. So I just wanted, it's, it's fantastic to be back in church for this service, but as we look around the church this morning, I wonder if we could say that Christ Church is a healthy body, that we're all working together with Christ as our head. We know we have to look after our physical bodies to stay fit and healthy. We have to eat healthily and exercise and take time to care for ourselves. And as we get older, as I can tell you, bits stop functioning properly and hurt but we have to fight to keep fit and to keep going and God's plan for us as a church the body of Christ is that we should all help each other along one of the things I really missed during lockdown is actually the ability to meet face to face um, at the nine o'clock service everybody kept their masks on so I still couldn't see people's faces most of you have got your masks off. It's lovely to see your faces and to feel as though we're in this together, part of it, part of the church. Um, in verse 7, it says, Each of us has received a special gift into proportion what Christ has given. That means all of us here have a special gift for the purpose of building up the church. And that's both in numbers and in depth of spirituality. Ephesians says we've all been given gifts and those gifts are to prepare us for service in order to build up the body of Christ. All the gifts are for the same purpose and all of us need to work together for the good of the whole body. Now the gifts some people have are obvious and glamorous. Some people's gifts are hidden and some people use their gifts in a way that no one ever sees. When I first went to Crosby and I was getting to know people, um, I, I shook the hand of a lady going out of the door one morning, an older lady, and she said, oh, she said, I'm not one of the important ones. I, I, I just help to clean the church. And I said, so that is a really important job. We couldn't function without you doing that. There are lots of essential jobs that happen behind the scenes that nobody knows about. And we all need to be using our gifts for the good of the whole. We can all offer something. Um, Roy Barker, who was the vicar of my home church, was always challenging people, always asking people to do things um, always asking them to, to try something new, always encouraging you to step out in faith. I can remember the first thing he asked me to do was to lead um, a Sunday school class. And um, he had this way of coming, getting you. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, 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 I've been thinking that this would be a good thing for you. And he walked off and I thought, I've just said yes to that. Um, and 
so in some ways, I know people, when I was here before, used to say I was very similar, but it's because of this picture of the church where we all, all have gifts to offer, we all have a part to play, and it's, it's helping each other to find the gifts and talents that we often hide or don't feel are, are worth very much. Each of us is individually important to the whole, and there are always things to be done and simple ways in which we can serve. Um, just thinking about our physical bodies in a, in a different way, what happens if, if, we, if we do too much? We pull muscles, we strain our backs, we get eye strain, or we're just plain exhausted. So if you think about the church as a body, and you look around, and there are some people who are doing an awful lot, they're probably doing too much and that is not healthy. It means that other people are not doing what they should be doing and using the gifts that they've got. In a church like Christchurch, where there's lots going on, we need to make sure that we support each other and help to carry the load so that we remain a healthy body. My, my favourite verses in this whole passage are verses uh, 15 and 16, which... Uh, say rather speaking the truth in love we are to grow up in every way into him who's the head into christ from whom the whole body is joined and knit together by every joint with which it's supplied when each part is working properly makes bodily growth and upbuilds itself in love that's what we should be doing that's the way it works and it's a, it's a great picture of the church it's like a, a blueprint for, for the way we should work it's God's plan how it should be and that that verse those two verses in, inspire me to carry on even though if I'm honest most of the churches I've worked in have fallen fallen very far short of that that goal of everybody doing what they should um, often there are too few people doing far too many things with so many people not exercising their gifts and not offering their service, not listening to the voice of Christ and not realising our full potential. This morning when I was preaching, I'd, I'd remembered that there was a stained glass window in church and I thought it was that one. And when I looked at that one, I realised it wasn't that one. Uh, it's, it's the one at the back over there, which is dedicated to one of the uh, former vicar's wives and the, the, the little line at the bottom of it says she did what she could she did what she could and I think that's a, a really good phrase have we done what we could has he done what he could has she done what she could using our gifts for the good of all not in frenetic activity not in great acts of service not in going into full-time ministry just offering ourselves and our gifts to Christ for him to use for the good of all, for the building up of the whole church. We have done what we could. And that means when there's a request from help, when Sarah says, I've had an idea, um, and you think, oh, no, that's not me. It just may be. It may be Christ asking you to offer the gift that you've got for the good of all. So when there's a request for help, don't close your ears. Don't say it's not me. Just ask, is that something that maybe I could do? Maybe Jesus wants me to do. Is there something I can do that's for the good of all? Simple thing. Christchurch, for me, other than my home church, which was St Mary's Upton, is the closest I've got to seeing this passage fulfilled because... When I look around, I know how many people are using their gifts and are serving and are seeking to see this church grow. Um, we are truly blessed by the many people and the many ways in which people seek to serve Christ and use their gifts. But as with our human bodies, we've got to keep at it. We've got to keep looking after our, the whole body. We've got to keep exercising. We've got to keep being fed, we've got to keep 
growing. So together we continue the good work that has been begun in us and move on to even greater and better things, growing up into Christ, who is our head, for his name's sake. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray. Living Lord, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you call us and equip us, that you send us your spirit to help us with those things that you're calling us to do. So Lord, help us to recognize the challenge that we've heard this morning. Help us to hear what you are calling us to do. Thank you that you send us your spirit to help us do what you call us to. Help us to hear your voice, to reveal your love to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to declare our faith in the God who loves us and equips us. If you'd like to stand, you're very welcome to do so. So together, let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's be seated, and Kath is going to bring our prayers. Let's pray together. Jesus said, when two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be in the midst of them. Trusting this to be so, we pray through our Lord to Almighty God. Father God, maker and sustainer of all things, we come humbly before you in an attitude of prayer. Still our minds and draw near to us, we pray. And let's begin our prayers this morning by being thankful. Father God, it is so great that we're able to meet again as a 1045 congregation in this building. Thank you for the amazing ways we've been able to diversify throughout lockdown and still be able, through the wonders of technology and the skills of our team of technicians, to worship together and stay in touch as Christ Church family. COVID has really made us appreciative of the things in life we very often took for granted. And we're so grateful for all the things like our friendships and so much else that money can't buy. We thank you for the world, Lord, for the beauty and majesty of nature, for the creatures that inhabit the land and sea, the seasons that come and go, and the provisions you have made for us to live here. Thank you that we have eyes to see and ears to hear and would we never cease to be amazed at the wonder of your creation. We're thankful, Lord, for our friends and families, wherever they might be. We ask you would bless all those we love and keep them safe this day. And now, just for a time of personal reflection, we spend a minute in silent thanks to our God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's now focus on saying sorry for the times we've disappointed God. Father God, we are sorry that many times we forget to live our lives with you at the center. And we are sorry too for the times we are selfish and put ourselves before others. Let's just ask God to forgive us.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you see everything we do, you hear our conversations, and you, are need, you know our needs and desires before we ask. So we think now of people known to us from our church family who are suffering in some way. The smiles on our faces and the cheeriness in our voices sometimes cover up the anxieties and pains we feel inside. We ask you to look after Ricky Abernethy, Craig Barker, Gerda Dennison, Bill Evans, Gabrielle Foster, Mary Lynn Gill, Zoe Moncrief, Izzy O'Connor, Dorothy Roberts, Mary Ruffley, Pat Stewart, and Bridget Wainwright. Please help them to cope with the days and weeks ahead as they, for different reasons, need your strength just now. Safe in the shadow of the Lord. Father, we pray for all those who grieve at this time or who remember the anniversary of a loved one. I pray for my cousins on the death of their dad and granddad, my uncle Stan. May they know your peace in their hearts and be encouraged by the promises of our Lord Jesus for all who believe and trust in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, lots of folk are on holiday at the moment, taking a well-deserved change from routine. Would you bless them with good rest and relaxation and time to recharge and refocus? We think of Sarah, Kean, and Samuel as they're away for a few weeks. We thank you for Sarah's enthusiasm and commitment to us and for the support Kean is always ready to give. We pray too for our young people as they go off to camp in Nottingham, along with their leaders, Jane, Fiona, Andy, Jamie, Isla, Michael and Charlotte. Would they have much fun as they spend time together and grow in their faith and love for you, Lord. We pray too for safety on that camp and as they travel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So Lord, as we go our separate ways, we would ask that in the week ahead you be with us wherever we go and guide us in all we do and say. May we be bold for the gospel and always ready to tell of your love. As the sun sets each night, would we wait with eagerness for the sunrise the next day and have your love in our hearts ready to share with those we meet. Help us to be willing to pass it on for you with a smile to a stranger, a helping hand to a neighbour, a visit to someone who's sick, or that long put off phone call. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue um, in prayer with, uh, by saying the Lord's Prayer together. So together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we're going to uh, sing again. So whether you're online or in person, you may like to uh, stand. And uh, if you're going to sing in church, then do please wear your masks. Thank you.
you'd like to be seated. We've asked Jesus to be at the centre of our lives, to inspire us, to give us his vision. And so we dare to pray the prayer for growth together, which will be up on the screen. So we dare to pray. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help Christ Church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's been lovely to worship with you this morning, both uh, online and in person. Um, Although uh, I do think my sofa is slightly more comfortable than the pews, I'll be honest. Um, A few notices, the first of which um, involves dragging the music group back um, because it is um, Bill Evans' birthday. So happy birthday, Bill. Uh, So we are going to sing um, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, The other main notice is that um, we are having another Alpha online uh, starting on the 8th of September at 7.15. There's a whole bunch of leaflets in fives at the back on the way out. So if you're in the church building, do please take some if you didn't have some uh, uh, last week. And do prayerfully consider who you uh, might be able to invite. If you're online, then do please, and in fact, frankly, even if you're in church as well, do please also share this on uh, your social media platforms as well. That would be uh, brilliant. It's, it's online to make it as easy as possible uh, for as many people as possible to encounter something of God's love and God's call for them. So do please think about who you can give those leaflets to. Um, if you're in the church building, there, there'll be a retiring collection at the end. If you're online, then do please give uh, online. So we will say uh, thank you for that now. So let's pray. Loving Lord, thank you for the uh, many gifts you give us, uh, including um, uh, that of money. Lord, please bless that money. Bless um, the ways that we offer our lives to you. Uh, take those things, those gifts, and use them to your glory, we pray. Amen. Um, I'm pretty sure that's everything. Um, At the end of the service, obviously, when you're moving around, do please wear your masks. Uh, I'm sure you want to talk to people. If you could perhaps do that outside, uh, people may feel uh, a little bit uh, more comfortable. Like I say, it has been lovely to worship with you. We will finish with uh, a blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.